you guys ask me all the time different questions about different bugs that you can feed to your chameleon, but specifically lots of questions around doobie roaches, which is great. So I asked you guys on Instagram to leave me any questions you had around them and that I would answer them in a video. So here we are. That's that video. So let's see what questions you guys have. I just want to start this video out by saying I am no bug expert. I know a lot about chameleons and if you're in the chameleon hobby or the reptile hobby, kind of by nature you end up learning a good amount of bugs because you have to feed the bugs, take care of the bugs to then feed to your chameleon. And same with you learn a lot about plants and electronics and lighting and things like that. My area of expertise, the area that I feel most comfortable on is chameleon care, not bug care. So there's got to be some amazing bug YouTube channels and resources out there that would be much more equipped. But I could talk about DB roaches as they pertain to chameleons. So just want to put the little caveat out there before we get started. So these are dubia roaches, not to be confused with Dubai roaches, which is a very common mistake when people are trying to spell things out. Um, these are an excellent, excellent feeder for chameleons because they're high in protein, low in fat, um, they've got the little exoskeleton on them, they are great for gut loading, um, they're relatively cost effective, efficient, efficient, is that the word? But you get you get your bang for your buck, like especially when compared to other bugs like hornworms, like doobie roaches I think are fairly priced for what they are. Um, they have a very long shelf life and so um, they're highly recommended for commands, but I understand the idea of feeding roaches to your command, the idea of having roaches in your home could be intimidating, can be scary, so let's go through some of the questions you guys have. Do they smell? And I'm gonna say they have a very, very like faint minimal smell and I can only tell they smell if I like stick my nose by them. And the thing that really smells is just like the poop that accumulates on the bottom or a dead roach. But if we're comparing the smell of dubia roaches to say hornworms or a dead superworm, these suckers are super, super low on the scale and I would say they're not smelly when you compare them to that. But if you're saying, is there zero smell? No, but like even my chameleon enclosures, they have that kind of like earthy dirt smell to them. That's where I'd put these guys. All right, put those over there. Next question, do they become cockroaches with age? No, doobie roaches are a completely different species than cockroach, so no they don't. Do they breed super easy and fast? So I don't breed any of my bugs. I have zero experience breeding dubia roaches, but from what I've heard, they are relatively easy to breed. Lots of people do it um, and have had a lot of success with it. But again, not my area of expertise, so can't really answer that one. How do you store them? Do you have to feed them? So let's go over this one. Very simply, how you can store your dubia roaches is in a plastic container with some holes at the top and then some egg cartons. You don't know, doobie roaches can't climb smooth surfaces, so the egg carton not only gives them places to hide and feel safe, but also stuff that they can climb on. And then of course you need holes in the top so they can breathe. This is the container that my doobie roaches came in when I bought them. This was only 115 roaches, so pretty manageable. But I also have this guy here, which I don't even think has, oh, there's like, one roach running around in there. So this is just like um, uh, a food storage container that you can get and it has holes uh, drilled in the top. And again, very similar concept. Plastic, holes at the top, a carton, um, make sure you're cleaning out the bottom and stuff because they'll die and poop and whatever. So you want to keep it relatively clean. And then yes, you do need to feed them. These are <laughs> live animals, they are live bugs. So in order to keep your bugs alive, you do need to feed them. I don't know if this is a question someone asked later on, but I'll cover it now. Um, what do I feed my dubia roaches? So I feed them the exact same things that I gut load my chameleons with. So that's gonna be a variety of fresh fruits, a variety of fresh fruits and vegetables. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so that could be anything from kale to mustard greens to bee pollen to um, apples, oranges, all that good stuff. Um, I do have a whole video on gut loading. Ooh, mango, that's a fun one I like to do. So um, the gut loading video I will link up above here for you guys, which goes through different things that are good, great, and bad to be feeding to your bugs, which you'll then feed to your chameleon. So check that out. I was wondering if they can climb out that green feeder cup you have. So if you guys don't know, I have these cute little feeder cups that I actually got online or could pick them up at PetSmart, but um, I do have an Amazon link for them. And they're boot burp. 
bird feeder cups. <laughs> I cannot talk today. They're bird feeder cups, so they have little hooks on them, which is great because I have dragon strand ledges in my enclosure, so then I can just hook those little guys in there. And no, my doobie roaches have never escaped from there. The only reason they've escaped is because I personally have knocked over the cup, but I'm also a very clumsy person, so that is 100% human error <laughs> and not the cup's fault. So your doobie roaches cannot climb smooth surfaces, so that's a great way to keep them contained. Can you get diseases from touching them? No, you cannot. However, I do know of some people who have allergies to dubia roaches. So if you're someone who, my hair, um, if you're someone who has allergies, um, that would be something you'd want to consider. Is it better to feed the molting ones or wait until they are done molting? So if you guys didn't know, um, the dubia roaches will molt and when they do, they turn a bright white color because they're shedding the outside. Again, not a bug expert, so don't come after me <laughs> on the technical pieces of it. But I, when I was, little fun story, when I was first starting to get into chameleons and bugs, I saw a molting dubia roach and I thought I was so cool. I was so lucky because I thought that I had an albino roach and I was like, what? This is crazy. Turns out it was just molting its shell, skin, exoskeleton. Again, this is, <laughs> I'm still learning about roaches, um, but yeah. So to answer your question, is it better to feed the ones that are molting or not molting? I've never fed one that was in the process of molting. I've only ever fed them once they're like back to being a brown color. So yeah, I'm not sure on that one. If anyone has any thoughts, like please let me know down below. Where is the best place to buy them? So it's unlikely that your Petco or PetSmart is going to be carrying dubia roaches. If you have a local reptile shop, much higher chances they'll carry dubia roaches. You could go to a local reptile expo, they for sure will have them. But you're gonna have most success if you purchase them online. There's tons of places you can buy dubia roaches from. I personally have been shopping lately at dubiaroaches.com. I actually have a link that will give you 10 to 15% off your first order. It was 10%. But then I think they changed it to 15%. So we're just gonna stick with 10 to 15% off your first order, so be sure to check that out down below. But there's other places you can even get them off Amazon, Josh's Frogs. Um, I will leave a link to the Chameleon Forms sponsors page because there is a bunch of different bug places that sponsor the forms, which is a great resource and a great thing for our chameleon uh, community. That's the word <laughs> I'm looking for. So be sure to check those out if you're looking for different places. Also, if you guys have any personal recommendations, I'm always down to try out new bug vendors and new bug places, so feel free to drop down any places that you guys would recommend and have good experiences with. Can you feed them to a three month old? Yes, you can. This is the amazing thing with doobie roaches is that they come in a variety of sizes. So the smallest, I believe, is a nymph, is what they're called, and those guys are like teeny tiny little baby dubia roaches so you can easily feed those to a three month old chameleon and I would highly highly recommend doing so because they're such a great feeder. The general rule of thumb is you don't want the bug to be any bigger than the width between the eyes of your chameleon. So a lot of people will ask me like what size should I get for my chameleon? Well that really depends on how big your chameleon is and then how big the roach is. So when you buy them online they typically will put the size like one inch, quarter inch, things like that. So then you can use that to gauge what size your chameleon should be eating. I have all adult chameleons at this point, so all of my guys are on large dubia roaches. How many are you supposed to feed to a juvenile chameleon? A juvenile chameleon at that age should eat as many bugs as they can. So probably anywhere from like 10 to 15 small dubia roaches. Just make sure they're not too big, because um, the bigger the bugs, the fewer you can probably feed to your chameleon. So just let them go crazy. I'd say probably at least 10. Are they fast and should I get them because I'm scared? Um, yes and no. Like when a doobie roach wants to move, like they've got some speed behind them, but they're also the kind of bug that just like sits there and doesn't move at all and stays in the same spot. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. I have lots of experience of just like grabbing a roach. Again, not with my hands. I use tongs. I will boop and I'll, I'll grab those suckers. So they're, it's never to the point where like one like runs away and escapes or something like that. So I can easily catch them. Um, as far as being scared, I totally understand. I was really, really nervous about getting into chameleon keeping because I knew that meant that I was going to have to deal with bugs and roaches and things like that. 
Some things that gave me peace of mind was that they can't climb smooth surfaces. So they're not going to escape their containers. They're not going to get out of the containers in the enclosures. They can't fly. So they're not just going to like randomly because a flying roach is freaky. Okay. Those guys will mm, not a fan. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is they don't breed at room temperature. Doobie roaches need some sort of heat source in order to breed. So that gave me peace of mind. And if the alternative is a cricket, which is jumpy, smelly, and noisy, like doobie roaches are none of those things. So that made me feel much better about feeding them. So that helped me, but um, feel free to share any tips that you guys have down below. Next question is how to clean their box or their setup. Um, so what I do is usually typically we'll pick out the dead ones. That's easy enough. And then I'll remove, like I'll have two plastic containers, one that's like all clean, and good to go and so then I just transfer all the roaches into that new one and then I clean out all the poop and dead ones out of the old one um, and just do it like that but yeah or I just work around the roaches and I just kind of like use a little spoon <laughs> and scoop up the poop and the dead ones I've done that too do they die easily no these guys have a very very long shelf life like I'm talking months so that's the amazing thing about doobie roaches is that they live a very, very long time and they grow very slowly, especially when we're thinking about hornworms that like poof, those guys explode. These guys grow very slowly, um, especially if you kind of stagger their food and don't provide the heat source for them. That definitely helps. Are they scary? That's subjective. Um, I was definitely intimidated by them when I first got started, but it's been a couple of years now that I've been keeping doobie roaches and now I'm pretty unfazed by them. But I'm mindful that not everyone's like that. So just, you know, use your tongs, give them space. Maybe just start out with a few and then see how you do with that would be my suggestion. Can you get them on the black market or smuggle them into Florida? So if you guys didn't know, dubia roaches are illegal in the state of Florida as well as in Canada. Um, so if you don't have be roaches available to you because of that there are definitely different roach species that you can check out i know like red runners are a popular one i stick exclusively to doobie roaches i haven't branched out into different roach species but there are definitely ones out there that are legal in florida and canada that are good for your chameleon do you breed them no i do not i have zero goose egg zero interest in breeding bugs people ask me all the time i don't mind paying extra for someone else to deal with breeding the bugs. Can you imagine me being in an apartment and then my like complex coming and doing like a check-in and then they see that I have literally thousands of roaches in my apartment? Plus that would freak me out. Like I could, I could never, no. As of now, unless I can have like a garage or a space like far, far away where I could potentially breed them. But even still, because if you're breeding them, then you have to do with the adults. And I will say the adult doobie roaches to this day still freak me out a lot. So no, I do not breed them. Sorry, I can't give any advice on that. Oh man, here's three more questions about breeding them. Um, let's see. Can they be used as a main food source? So the answer to that is yes, doobie roaches can definitely be a staple feeder. They are very nutritional, they have a lot of benefits to them, so absolutely you can use them as a main food source. Just keep in mind that you're not limiting yourself to just doobie roaches. A lot of people think staple feeder or main bug and then just pretty much exclusively feed their chameleon that. The more variety, the better. So doobie roaches, great. But also throw in, you know, black soldier fly larvae, blue bottle flies, silkworms, wax moths, wax worms, hornworms, hawk moths, crickets, you know, locusts, snails on occasion, right? There's tons of different bugs that you can feed to your chameleon. So the more variety you can feed, the better. So that's my recommendation. So there are quite a few questions in here about the nutritional facts on doobie roaches. Not an expert, but I will share, this is off of doobieroaches.com. So let me share with you some of the um, statistics that they have in there due to like composition and stuff like that. So for a extra small doobie roach, they have 71.5% moisture, 21.4% protein, 6.1% fat. Um, the calcium is 700 milligrams per kilogram and the phosphorus is 2,600 milligrams per kilogram. And I'll, I'll try and throw all this up on the screen here. And then the 
medium size, which is probably the more common size that humans are going to be eating. The moisture is just slightly lower, and then the protein is just slightly lower with a little bit higher fat. Um, so these are definitely higher in protein than other bugs, say like waxworms, superworms, things like that. Now people were asking like how do they compare to crickets, so they did provide some information on crickets here. So the crickets were 77.1% moisture, 15.4% protein, and 3.3% fat. The big thing here is the calcium and phosphorus um, is 275 milligrams per kilogram calcium, and then phosphorus is 2520 milligrams per kilogram. Um, so when comparing, and here on the website, I'll drop the link down below, they did a really good job of comparing and contrasting the roaches to the crickets. So when it comes to fat, the baby crickets are lower in fat than the baby roaches, but the adult crickets are higher in fat than the dubia roaches, adults. And it's a very, very small amount, so not anything significant. Um, a lot of people think that dubia roaches have insanely more protein than crickets do, but based off of the composition that they're sharing here, that roaches do contain one and a half times as much protein as baby crickets, with the the baby roaches so they are a little bit higher in protein but not anything like outstanding like people think where is the true i think benefit of the dubia roach especially when we're talking about chameleons is the phosphorus ratio so there's this calcium to phosphorus ratio that we don't want to be giving our chameleons too much phosphorus which is why we supplement the bugs with calcium um, when we feed them to our chameleons and this is why we have to do this for our bugs in captivity versus like bugs in the wild because of the bugs we have available in captivity tend to be higher in phosphorus than calcium. So, and sorry if that's too technical, but I'm trying to keep it semi-high level. The gist of it is crickets have a 13 to 1 phosphorus to calcium ratio, which means this number's 13 with phosphorus, one over here with calcium, which means we need to bump up this calcium with the calcium supplement to get it to be 13 so that it's even. Now, a dubia roach, they're saying that their phosphorus to calcium ratio is three to one, as you can see, much smaller than 13 to one. So that's really the nutritional benefit for the dubia roach based off of what they're saying over here. So crickets are still a very, very beneficial feeder. Like, they are absolutely amazing for your command, and I would highly recommend them. There are just some additional benefits with the doobie roaches, just with like the smell, the lifespan, the shelf life, all that stuff um, is a little bit better, I think, over on the doobie roach side. But try them both, you know, see what your command likes, see what you enjoy keeping yourself. I would highly encourage you to try both of them and then go from there. So there you guys have it. There is a little bit of a Q&A on doobie roaches. Hopefully this gives you some insight into what it's like to keep these guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. Feel free to subscribe so you know when I post a new video. And you follow Neptune and all my chameleons on social media at Neptune the Chameleon. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye! So this little roach has just been chilling on its back, struggling to flip over, and I just realized it's missing a leg. See that three on one side, two on the other. Poor buddy. Now you're just gonna get eaten by a chameleon.